Can China really take on the rest of the world when it comes to selling electric cars on a mass scale? Well, by the end of this video, you will know the answer. Hello, Electroheads, I'm Ailish, and today we are talking automotive domination, and this 800 pound gorilla is putting its weight behind making EVs a priority in a way that only a superpower like China could do. It's the modern day space race, the sprint for dominance in what will be the biggest industry of tomorrow. And it's happening right now, unfolding at a ridiculous pace not seen before. And you can bet the West is watching. Did you know that six in 10 vehicles sold last September were built in China? The country produces more than 25 million vehicles every year and is by a long way the largest automotive market in the world. But only about 5% of those vehicles are currently electric. However, that tiny percentage is set to grow, thanks in no small part to a major push by the Chinese government to support the EV industry. They're saying jump and now everyone's saying how high? This is big strategic thinking and it has been years in the making. So I think we should take a closer look, right? But wait, before we go any further, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this kind of content. I do, so should you, right? The most important place to start here is government policy. For more than a decade, governing bodies had in place subsidies to encourage both the use and production of electric cars. Like I mentioned earlier, the country is by a long way the largest automotive market in the world. But while this has done wonders for economic growth, it's also created problems when it comes to things like air pollution, emissions. And you can check out my recent video where I dive deeper into the effects of air pollution and how it affects you clicking this link above. That's right. So China has clocked this and in order to try to overturn what it now recognizes as a very deadly problem, the government has introduced a number of policies that encourage and incentivize going electric. But it's not all softly, softly. Many of its policies have forced the hand of car makers. Things such as tax cuts on buying and using the cars themselves and regulatory targets which require automakers to accelerate their investment in EV production. If manufacturers don't produce a certain number of electric vehicles, per year, they face a fine. And then there's straight up grants. Companies like NEO were given a whopping $1 billion from state owned entities. And to top it off, there's been investment into the wider transport infrastructure as well, such as charging stations, but more on that later. Basically, it's big money. China's already spent upwards of $60 billion to help support and push forward its EV industry. You don't do that if you don't expect it to be the future. This is all in line with China's bigger plans. It's becoming a leader in green energy. As the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitter, the country has pledged to become carbon neutral by 2060. Now, we all like to think that to be sooner, but even with 38 years to go, there's a hell of a lot of work to do. But they're making a good start, and China can lay claim to producing most of the world's solar panels and wind turbines. And it's also light years ahead when it comes to the production of lithium ion batteries, which is crucial for the development of EVs. Batteries are a key part of the story here, and China has invested heavily in the industry as part of its push to develop EVs. It probably helps that they've got the largest lithium reserves compared to, well, the world. And people are cynical about where that will lead other countries in the future. That's suspicious. But if China is flexing its muscle when it comes to batteries, it's also showing signs of Western style diplomacy and soft power. China has opened its arms to Europe and America. Well, sort of. It's incentivized big auto companies to come and set up shop. Tesla, for example, now has a factory base in Shanghai and it's been successful. In December, it sold a record number of China-made cars and is predicted to sell as many as 1 million in 2022. Other auto giants have been welcomed, but with a catch. They must join forces with Chinese automakers if they want to have a base there. Syke, for example, owns 50% of GM China. The idea behind it is partly about getting the best innovation and the best resources in the country, but it's also about moving with new trends. Companies like Neo and Link and Co are showing that there is a growing market within China for Tesla or BMW style upmarket EVs, as opposed to simply the cheap mini EVs that China has become known for. Oh my God, what is that? What is but high quality EVs with good range are also proving to be building genuine as opposed to just a government enforced demand. Once again, we've seen here how tax policy has really played a part here. Five years ago in China, you'd have to pay something like $12,000 just for the privilege of licensing a petrol car. Whereas if you bought an electric car, that huge cost was waived straight off the bat. The government has since called some of these policies in part because it was costing way too much money. I am so 
But the idea behind it was to essentially force demand and then phase down intervention and support as organic demand takes hold. So we already know that electric cars account for around 5% of vehicles sold in China today, but it's estimated that by 2030, that percentage is supposed to rise up to 40%. Woo! And just five years on from that, by 2035, China has pledged to go all electric slash hybrid. They're talking the big talk here, but are these numbers really realistic? Well, transport infrastructure and the way urban Chinese driving habits lend themselves to EVs is all a part of the story. Bloomberg News estimates that 85% of miles driven in China are driven in a non-motorway environment, but we all know that's just not the case in other countries. Like, America, for example. But you need look no further than Liu Zhou, probably butchered that. Liu Zhou. Not bad. Where EVs are being heavily embraced, the city has created lanes on large roads and motorways where only EVs can go. They've introduced high incentive parking spots reserved exclusively for EVs. And with 30% of all vehicles sold in Liuzhou being electric, that's more than five times the average for China. So it's no wonder some people are calling it the EV capital of the world. Only Oslo and Norway has a higher proportional uptake of EV use. Naturally, a lot of companies are using Liuzhou as a test bed for electric vehicles, and that means the city infrastructure that comes with it too. In 2017, Syke GM Wuling offered a free 10-month test drive campaign, which ended up being so popular that not only did they run out of slots, but they also converted a whopping 70% of these tests into straight sales of its car. Why push the sales when the product does it for you? Brilliant, but lazy. They used these tests to obtain customer feedback and study driving habits, and subsequently adapted the design of the entire car so that it was geared specifically towards its users making short inner city journeys. The result, a tiny two-seater car, the Baojun E100, similar to that of a smart car, which not only lowered the bar of ownership, but also helped reduce running costs and insurance. The popularity of these little cars also allowed local authorities to create 15,000 additional parking spots around the city. A tiny size meant they could be parked in previously inaccessible or unusable parts of the street. And also, because they could be charged via a regular household socket, Ruling were able to install charging points around the city at a fraction of the price of typical EV infrastructure. So what can we learn from this? Well, depends on how you look at it really. Is it all just another example of China banging its fist and asserting its power? Or is that in itself a viewpoint of pure Western arrogance? Probably. At least they're trying to do something positive for the world, right? Right? It's fair to say that without government support, subsidies, policy regulation and the like, electric vehicles simply wouldn't have the momentum in society they have now. And that goes for everywhere in the world, not just China. There's also a huge amount to be said for China's go hard or go home approach. Real change comes when infrastructure and systems are treated with an innovative eye so that modern products can actually exist and flourish within them. Beyond that, questions remain as to whether or not the quality of Chinese EVs will live up to the historical benchmarks of its European and American counterparts, as opposed to being, well, slightly ropey as quite a lot of Chinese cars have been. Step back and think I'm gonna vomit! <laughs> Thank you for watching Electroheads. I'm sure you guys have a lot of opinions, so get them down in the comment section. I love to see it. And please do like this video if you enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button. You know you want to. See ya.